very smoky. Welcome to whiskey.com where fine spirits meet. My name is Lüning, Horst Lüning, I'm the master taster of whiskey.com and today we have a bottle from the Tobomori distillery here on my cask. It's from Signatory Vintage, an independent bottler, and it's uncolored, unchill filtered, and it's quite young. It's just from the vintage 2009, and it's light. It's just seven years old. It was uh, distilled on April the 6th, 2009, and it was put into the bottle on October the 5th, 2016, so just a month in the bottle. Um, and it's matured in a hogshead, so a refill cask made out of ex-American uh, oak bourbon barrels. And typically they put, um, they shipped over the staves from the US uh, in pieces because freight was, freight volume was expensive in former times. And then they were refurbished into cask in Scotland and they increased the volume of the barrels to a hogshead from 208 liters uh, to 250 roughly. So they made out from four American standard barrels, three hogsheads. This was the typical relationship uh, between the volumes or this, the, count, this, the count of the staves of the cask. Um, the cask number is 700,313. I doubt that the distillery of Tobomori produces 700,000 casks, so the first 700 uh, will be an identifier which type of whiskey or which type of cask or which production month or so on it was. And 313 should have been the real cask number uh, because it was distilled in, in April, in the beginning of April. Um, and if you produce smoky whiskey and the Lejeik, the written Lejeik, uh, pronounced <laughs> slightly like Lejeik, um, this is a very smoky whiskey and if you produce smoky whiskey uh, on pot stills and the whole equipment then well you find the smoke everywhere in the wash bags in the mesh ton um, in the faints receiver in the pot stills in the uh, spirit receiver uh, spirit safes everywhere in the spirit receiver so uh, if you produce smoky whiskey on a distillery and you would like to switch over to unsmoky whiskey again, then you have to clean the complete equipment. So typically distilleries which produce the Tobomori, the name of the distillery is the name of the main product, and the smoky uh, Lidgic, um on the same equipment, then they have just some three, six, eight, 12 weeks in a year where they produce uh, smoky whiskey. This is the same at other distilleries. Um, and then they clean everything up and then they produce unpeated whiskey again. So the Lidgic is the smoky one from Tobomori and the Tobomori itself is the unsmoky whiskey. Pfft, more to say. Uh, I never visited Tobomori. I'm, I'm afraid I haven't found the time to, to travel to the Isle of Mull, uh, which is <laughs> Not at the really at the routes I travel in Scotland. Yeah, already smoky. Um, and just to visit one distillery, uh, the detour is, is quite too too far for me, or was quite far to me. So uh, now where I visited nearly all of the Scottish distilleries, uh, or the established Scottish distilleries, there are some new ones are missing as well. Uh, but sometime I will have to f to go for to Bomori as well. Tobomori changed uh, the proprietor and uh, with this they changed uh, the whiskey itself um, but only in the well in the standard bottlings of the distillery. This is an independent bottle uh, of Tobomori uh, and there the cask is delivered by or supplied uh, by the independent bottler signatory vintage and the whiskey is matured at the location of the independent bottler. So they they bring half a lorry, a full lorry load of cast to the distillery. They are filled up and then brought back again. So that just the production process is in the hand 
of the distillery and the cask management and the maturation is in the hand of the independent bottler. So the, the kind of whiskey coming out of the cask from independent bottlers and the distillery itself are quite different. <sighs> Very smoky. And to give you a number, I think it's around 50 ppm. And the 50 ppm belong to the production process. They measure how many phenols are on uh, the barley corn after the drying. Uh, and in the following process of mashing, fermenting and distillation, uh, a lot of the phenols are lost and I think it's it's a factor of 5 to 10 which is lost from the production to the uh, raw whiskey and during the maturation even more is lost so that after 30 years of maturation of a smoky whiskey there's only very few lo left and the rest is converted into uh, more complex aromas and this one is therefore quite young just seven years old vintage 2009 and this brings a hefty smoky aroma to the whiskey in the back there's not much more the the smoky aroma is that intense some light fruitiness is detectable but the typical caramel and vanilla not there well it's refill this is even un uncolored and unchill filtered, but the light color shows that there's not much of transfer from the cask walls to the whiskey or happened. Yeah. Mm. Hui, oh, 46% ABV, quite strong, and some attack in the front of my tongue, and uh, well, some oiliness and a hefty smokiness covering my, the inside of my mouth. Yeah, um, yeah, now some some vanilla is showing up finally. But the, the impression is just smoke. Well, there's a malt below, not uncomfortable, quite smooth. Uh, but the, the expression is primarily on the smoke. The taste is, well, the, there is a taste, but it's not that dominant. And the aftertaste is quite short on the tongue. <laughs> the smokiness still stays, stays on. So this one is a typical representative of a smoky young island malt and uh, with blind with a blind tasting you wouldn't be able to distinguish if this one comes from an island or from Isla. This is well uh, comparable to a young Isla malt. Thank you for watching, stay tuned, there's more to come and if you like this video, give me a thumbs up.